Did you know that only 7% of our viewers are actually subscribed? We love creating content for you and want to keep doing it, but we need your support to grow our channel so we can make ends meet. So, if you enjoy our videos and want to see more, please consider subscribing and liking our videos. Thanks for your support. Hi, this is Mary from Cycle Maintenance. I'll start again. Hi, this is Mary from Cycle Maintenance Academy. I'm here today at Ice Bike North and we've come to the Vittoria stall to talk to Jake about tyres because as you know, we seem to see them getting wider and wider on road bikes and we're going to get a bit of um, insight into this now. Hi Jake. Hi Mary. Do you want to tell us a little bit about tyres? Yeah, sure. Them? So what we are seeing on the road side of things is we're starting to see more and more tubeless technology coming into the road side, which has been commonplace on the mountain bike and gravel side now for more than a decade. And with that basically comes wider rims and definitely wider tyres, but also much lower tyre pressures. So what road cyclists are understanding now is that if you are going for a wider tyre to lower tyre pressure, not only are you getting more comfort, but you are actually getting more braking performance and the tyre is actually faster. You could probably argue for the last hundred years we were telling people to run really high tyre pressures and really narrow rooms mm. and believing that was faster. Mm. The reality is, unless you are on a track like we are today, in real world situations, it is not a faster tyre because you're being deflected by every single little obstacle on the road, every little pebble, every little pothole. If you can allow that tyre to conform to the terrain, you're going in a straight line and you are more comfortable doing so. With the tubeless technology, of course, you get things like the sealant that will obviously seal up any cuts that you might get, holes inside it as well. And that's definitely beneficial for people too. So you don't have to constantly stop to replace an inner tube. So like I say, it's really the type of technology that mountain bikers and gravel riders have been enjoying for the last decade is now making its way into the road scene. Um, even on the performance side of things, the teams that we sponsor, a lot of those teams are going to tubeless tires because the tests are proving that a tubeless tyre is actually faster than a clincher, which is a tyre with an inner tube, and even a tubular tyre, the ones that are glued to a wheel. Tubs, yeah. So they're all going to tubeless wow. for those benefits, you know. And with that, like I say, comes 28 mil, even in some cases 30 mil tyres. On the consumer side of things, we're seeing more and more road bikes kind of verging into the gravel side of things mm -hmm. where you're getting disc brakes, you're getting through axles, you're getting wider rims and wider tires. And once you've ridden a bike, with a wider tyre and a lower tyre pressure, it's very difficult to go back to a higher pressure and a skinnier tyre because okay. it's night and day. It takes one ride to convert somebody to lower tyre pressures. Wow. wow. It, it really is that yeah. simple, you know. So it's not just um, laboratory figures or things like that, it's real life. Very much so, very much so. And like I say, unless you are riding somewhere where that's a beautiful bit of tarmac or, you know, a track like today, it's it makes so much sense, you know. As a company for us as Vittoria, we are you know, offering lots of tubeless road tyres, but we do understand that there are still a lot of people are using inner tubes, and you can still use them with obviously wider tyres mm. and wider mm. rims, but really hand in hand with wider tyres and wider rims comes tubeless technology. Okay. Um, so you really are starting to see more bikes that are kind of geared up towards that. And mm. even in some cases, straight out the box, coming with tubeless tyres and tubeless rim tape right. and tubeless ready wheels yeah. and even the sealant that you need to put inside the tyre. Right. So the assumption is that if you're buying a modern road bike, that's really the setting you'll be using it in. You know, just like that's the same assumption on road, uh, gravel bikes and mountain bikes now as well. I mean, I've got a real old fashioned rally that I love and I do like the Vittoria tyres on it but I can't fit anything in bigger than a 25. That's the problem. That's And if I'm being honest, Mary, I think you only really start getting the benefits of tubeless road above 28 millimeters. Right. Even if you were running a tubeless 25 millimeter tire, you won't be able to run the pressures as low as you could do on a 28 or 30 mil. So you could argue then, is it really worth the extra hassle of you, for instance, going out and buying yourself tubeless wheels, tubeless tires, you know, 
reminding yourself to top up the sealant occasionally yeah. so there's still something in there when you're still having to run maybe 90 to 100 psi mm. you know mm. i don't know what you're running at the moment but i'm assuming it's maybe around you know above 100 between 100 and 120 psi yeah i mean i always aim to do that but i end up with about 90 i'm always a bit scared of that sure, final sure. sort of push but yeah so 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 to give an example i mean this might shock you so something like the new course the next side that we released last year which mm -hmm. this in this particular case that's a 28 mil tire yeah. tubeless compatible it actually has two pressure ratings on it. So one's for a normal tubeless wheel and the other one's for the new hookless rooms that we're starting to see on the marketplace. The maximum allowed pressure for a normal tubeless wheel on this particular tire is 95 PSI. Oh. And wait for it, on a hookless room, the maximum pressure is 72 PSI. Wow. It's low. That is unbelievable for a road bike, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. I mean, that's exactly. the sort of thing that people would come in the shop, you'd service their bike and you'd go, pump your tires up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So really, even if you wanted to be running the pressure you're currently running, this is not the tyre and this is not the technology for you. Yeah, the yeah. hookless thing is something that's not going away. It's definitely becoming more oh, commonplace. People need to be aware of it. It's not as simple as buying a hookless wheel set and buying a tubeless road tyre to go with that. You need to be aware that that tubeless tyre is hookless room compatible. Um, because you, you do open yourself up to injury if you do run at higher pressures it will just blow off the rim right. and that's why they are recommending lower tire pressures but of course the assumption is it's always going to be a wider rim and therefore a wider tire as well yeah. you know yeah. it yeah. all goes hand in hand yeah. including the low pressure <laughs> exactly but like I say once you've tried it it is a game changer it really is you know do you think the new materials they use in the graphene and the silica is that making a difference it really does rolling? in terms of like air retention absolutely yeah. and for us you know the, the reason why we use graphene and also now silica in some of the models is because graphene on a molecular level actually covers the kind of gaps that you get between rubber molecules. Right. So one that gives you more air retention, but it actually makes a tire last longer, but also run faster. Wow. Because rubber is a very irregular surface under a microscope. Mm. So if you put graphene in that rubber mix, you get a more even surface. So therefore the tire rolls quicker, but it actually means that it lasts longer as well because you don't have all these little bits of rubber constantly flaking off. Right. So we, we've been using graphene now for, for quite a while and we are still the biggest consumer of it in the cycle industry and especially in the tyre industry. And for us, it's, 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 it's a game changer for us. If we make the same tyre with the same tread compound and the same casing and with and without graphene, the difference is a night and day. You know, it's, it's, it's that noticeable, you know. And, you know, in real world, it gives you better wet grip and durability, like I say, which for a consumer is... That's, that's what we want as everyday cyclists. And then on the pro side of things, it gives them a faster rolling tyre, which is exactly what they want. That's fantastic, Jake, telling us all about that. So now we know the answer's there. Victoria's got it for you. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jake. You're welcome. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found the information in this video useful. Oh, and don't forget to let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more videos like this one with our guest experts. Thanks, and see you in the next one!